Okay, this is uh, chapter two, spatial data and our packages for mapping. The learning, um, okay, learning objective are understanding what are the ty different types of spatial data, what are the CRS, so the coordinate reference systems and uh, how to deal with them, uh, what are the differences within the different types and everything, and then finally make a map with R. Uh, we have uh, three main uh, types of spatial data. We have aerial, spatial data, geostatistical, and point patterns. Here we use this, uh, these packages for making the maps, ggplot 2 leaflet, and map view, and tmap. Okay, Let, let's talk about the, the space. Okay, so let's um, well, um, spatial object lives in within in the space. Okay, and we can imagine that uh, we can reassume this uh, information, uh, saying that um, we have uh, um, some observed values, and these are our z. Uh, found or observed in some locations. So S is the location. So we have observed values in, uh, in the S location. This location will belongs to, belongs to a domain, okay? And this is what changes basically. So the, it's the domain that changes within the aerial, geostatistical or point patterns. The domain is included in the uh, real uh, numbers, um, uh, uh, framework, and uh, it can be of different uh, dimensions. So for now, we are talking about two dimensional spatial data. Okay, so the first type first are, yeah. Just one quick point. Uh, are you sure Z is the observed value? Or it's like the Y, you know, like the general uh, processes we're trying to imp uh, observe? I'm unsure the, about that. The, the big Z. The big Z are the observed values. Okay. Okay. Uh, the node, the attributes we observe. Yeah, but is it what is it the data or like the general uh, stuff? You know, like let's say like we want like the let's say the rainfall. Is it the data of the rainfall or the overall rainfall? It's the data. Okay. Okay. Because uh, uh, it's the domain that the the um, defines the the different types of spatial data. So okay. then you have a yeah. And the Z are the type, of, um, the, the attributes, so the type of data that we observe. Okay. Because we, yeah, we, we have some uh, different types. For example, for aerial data, the domain D is fixed for aerial data. And uh, this means that um, they can be regular or, are irregular in shape and uh, are made of uh, finite number of aerial units with well-defined boundaries. This is an example, okay, of aerial data. So well-defined boundaries. And uh, most uh, frequently are uh, data such as zip code, census tract, or, or so expressed in pixels, basically. Um, here is an example uh, where we read a shape file using the SF uh, simple feature package and the function stread. So we read the shape file and uh, assigned to a variable named nc. And then we can plot it and see 
uh, by the color. So we fill it with a, a particular color. And then we use a geom simple feature to basically define the polygons. If we go uh, and have a look at what's happened um, in her, Uh, okay, so okay, um, I load this libraries, okay, and uh, um, this is this data set, this shape data set is provided by the, the simple feature package but you can use any, any shape file and read it with, with this function, st read. So you have this new object um, and C, which is a simple feature collection of features. And uh, as you see, there is an area, perimeter, city, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see there is this seed 74, so we, we use this uh, um, value, the value of this vector for um, coloring the map, for filling the uh, polygons of the map. And um, so what we do is basically uh, using geom simple feature for um, uh, plotting the map. And you can use this simple feature when you have simple feature data Okay. Have you got any questions? Yes, uh, okay. 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 Okay, I wanted to ask based on the simple future or the shape file. Yeah. So if I have any other shape file, I can just use the st underscore read function to read it. Oh, if uh, then we will see another example. But in case you've got uh, a file which ends with dot shp, you can use st read. Okay. Okay. Uh, st read is from the SF package, simple picture. But yeah. uh, Federica will probably tell you later, like uh, a shape file uh, usually is, is at least three files. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we will it's talk. Come letters. It's, but yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. Can read, you can read every shape file uh, with like the st read function. You have also have the read sf function, which is basically the same, but will not uh, print you a resume of the data. Okay. Like if if you uh, when Frederica loaded it uh, on her R Studio uh, IDE, you see like it give you a description of the file. See, it's provided a description. And uh, if you change it for read SF instead of uh, ST read, it will do the same, but without telling you like the, um, the without giving you like this, uh, oh, it's, it's the criteria well true. By default, uh, ST read is, uh, read SF is a ST read with quite equal true by default. Just a wrapper, just convenient function. You can try it. Okay. Okay, so let, let, um, this okay. is basic, yeah. Uh, this is uh, one way to read the, uh, the shape file when you've got just one, uh, so a file that ends with dot .shp, shape, dot .shape. If you got the, the whole um, con um, container uh, with different uh, type of files, which are related, but ends, uh, uh, there is one ending with .shp, but there are other files. We will talk about that just uh, in a few minutes. Then you can use another function and you don't need to select which a tab of these files, but you take the whole container because those are the layers of your map. So one is for polygons, like, so the shape, and the other ones are used for the background marks.
can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes okay. I can hear you. <laughs> because I, I've heard the, uh, a, a bunch of silence and uh, yeah, that I'm yeah, talking no, by myself. We lose at you a few, few, few seconds, but then it was good. Okay. Thank you. So these are the first type that we are uh, just taught. Um, the aerial data, and so the domain is fixed, such as zip code, census tract. The geostatistical data, in geostatistical data, the domain is continuous, fixed, and um, you have like uh, examples such as air pollution data or rainfall values, and the, the domain is these things here, no? which specify when you talk and, and, and you want to reassume um, an argument, you say you use these formulations to, to summarize what the things that you are specifying. And uh, generally speaking, the uh, location belongs to a domain. So the, the domain is the things that makes the difference within the types. And uh, for geostatistical data, data represent, for example, can represent an average of, the, of a certain type of measurements. Here we have a, a, an example of the average rainfall measurements for uh, a period between May and June, which is the dry season and uh, over different years and collected at 143 recording stations in Brazil, Paraná State. So here you need to uh, load the GOR package, which I had some challenges. So I had to remove the package and install it again from, with dev tools and specify uh, a um, uh, a version which was earlier than, than, than the last one and then it worked. Basically um, you you have this data you have this data which is Parana and you select the cohorts and then uh, um, basically you select the, the rainfall and let, let's see this uh, in R. Okay. So here we have GOR and what we are going to use are this data. Okay, let's see what are they. Okay, so this data, you have east, north, and rainfall information. So you, you have this, this uh, cohort, they're not, in this case, they're not specified like longitude and latitude or UDM uh, east um, equator, UDM north. You have east and north, okay? So most probably uh, they are type UD UDM. And then we will see what is this uh, UTM uh, type of co uh, geo uh, spatial data. Um, so we make um, a map drawing the points using uh, east and north, and we color them with the rainfall. Okay, so we can see that the map, where is it? Okay, but, yeah? Uh, no. Uh, uh... So the simple features uh, data is a standard that store every uh, type of geometry in a one column. So if you have points, for example, it will store it in one column with a particular syntax. I will not go into it, uh, but uh, which will contain like uh, X and Y, let's say, mm -hmm. or uh, is Easting and Northing. But uh, if you are like, for example, a line, it will be like uh, more than one point because like for line, you need at least two points. Uh, and, and we'll start, if you go like, um, if you go a bit below, you see like uh, in the geometry field, you have a multi-polygon mm -hmm. that contain various 
uh, nodes that are points that are somewhere linked together. In the other data set, the Parana one, this is point. And a lot of time, point are just to read the coordinates are not in the simple feature standard, but just like everyone have a column, like you are representing it. I don't know if I needed to add that or if it's clear for everyone, but that's it. Thank you. So the all, all, all <clears throat> before the simple feature standard was implemented, uh, a lot of points were stored like that. How just uh, before the like, simple feature? Be, so you had just before the, oh, so before the simple features, uh, there are another way of representing special data, which was made by the SP package, which used is three classes of R that uh, add like uh, um, a data frame with the value, like let's say like you had rainfall, so you have a, a, a data frame with rainfall, you see? Like, uh, let's say like it have an index, let's say you have 10 points. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a data frame with 10 points with an index going from one to 10, and then you have your rainfall value. And let's say like you have the rainfall for like May to June, then let's say you have uh, a colon for every, every value, let's say like that. Then uh, you add like another object inside of the S3, S3 classes that contain mm -hmm. the geometry. Uh -huh. And uh, when we move it to the SF package, uh, <clears throat> we could a nested list inside of a colon into a data frame. And before 2016, it was not available, I think. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's why we needed like these S3 classes uh, to do that. But still a lot of package are using SP uh-huh yeah yeah that's it so this is just like for common knowledge but uh i mean common knowledge uh uh yeah it's common knowledge but most of the time you can like translate sp to sf and mm -hmm. do not or, or do the reverse uh mm -hmm. and do not care too much but this was history i guess yeah uh but anyway they're good to know uh let's let's go back here so as you can see now the, the um, we are not uh representing polygons which are all uh completely filled with colors but we are representing points so and even if they are continuous uh, color the, the um, so the, they are continuous values uh basically um they be, uh, live in a, a continuous fixed domain, okay? But they are points. Then we have point patterns. And this is again, uh, slightly different. Here is the domain is a, um, in point pattern is random, okay? So it's not that the, the points that we, we uh, have in our data most probably fill up all the polygons. No, they, they may spread around, okay? So and they we don't know how how they they can where they can go, okay? Be, because it depends by the data. Here uh, is um, there is an example which is one of my favorite, the story of John Snow and the cholera and all the other things. And you have this uh, package which uh, makes things easier because it everything already done. You can uh, like have this package Colira, and uh, it, it release it gives you the the map range. So uh, le let's see. Um, you have this um, map range, and so the, it's it's the box. Okay, are uh, the 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 minimum. Uh, longitude and the maximum longitude, the minimum latitude and the maximum latitude. So the box. So it, it provides the with the box, and then you you can use even the the plot function to plot the fatalities. This is the the data set. Okay, you see you've got uh, the number of cases and the the x and y. Um, so you, you plot the fatalities on the coordinates, 
and then you do some uh, extra features and everything, and then you can use add roads, which is again a function from the Colera, I believe so. Uh, add roads, as you can see, uh, this is the it adds. Ad, oops, automatically. Uh, the roads where the points uh, uh, will be located uh, on. And this is the result of this, uh, this map. The, this makes things easier, you know, because uh, you, you don't need to identify which is the uh, exact location, but you, you could even just uh, plot the points and then uh, call up like uh, with Gigi map uh, and uh, the Google API, uh, retrieve the, 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 the streets of London in Baker Street, around Baker Street. Or you can use like leaf, leaflet uh, with, with some uh, certain level of zoom to, to achieve this, uh, this result as well. Have you got any questions? No, I think it was clear. Like, just to be sure, like it's 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 good. Like the in geostat, like the location. Uh, let's say like it matters, but it's fixed. Like let's imagine this is just meteo station that collects rain, and the, the they are fixed. They do not move, and they do not like uh, what is like uh, like the 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 rain is continuous over the country, and the meteo mm -hmm. are fixed. Well, like in the case of this, you don't know where the death will happen. This is what you are interested in. This is why we said it's a stochastic process or it's said random because like uh -huh. we don't know. And obviously it's not random. It's around like the water supply, but uh, it's um, this is the topic of interest. We are in geostatistic. The topic of interest is like getting the rainfall, not like um, all over the, the country. I think, I don't know if it makes stuff okay. a bit clearer, but like the <clears throat> point pattern is like, you are trying to understand the point pattern. In Geostat, the point pattern matter, matter, matter because you it will help you doing interpolation, or, but uh, it uh -huh. doesn't, uh, it's fixed by design. This is like the, um, this is what mm -hmm. you get. Okay. In fact, in fact, um, if, if I, uh, I've stopped a bit uh, thinking about these three different types of uh, uh, spatial data. Because I'm, to be honest with you, I thought that they were just raster and vectors. If I, if I, I will have answered like that. Instead, we have aerial, geostatistical, and point pattern. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, um... Raster and vector are data abstraction. This is a way to represent okay. reality. RL, geostatistical, and point pattern is uh, is more like the what if you, for example, if you check the book from uh, Edza Pedzma and Roger ba Bivens, uh -huh. uh, they will call it support, S U P P O R T. This is um, even if you use raster data, the support is still an RL. Um, it's still an error like pixel, like it said here. You know, it's mm -hmm. another way of classify information. Oh, okay. or, uh, the data is supported. Uh, what, what, and this is very important because like, let's say you have your data on aerial data. Let's say you have like, um, on, this, uh, on this map you have like, is it like some, what inside of it? I think it's uh, a number of this infant deaths. Uh, you cannot go. Uh, you cannot go. Um, you cannot uh, divide a county. You have the the support of the information is county, uh -huh. and you cannot go. And county can have various shape or various surfaces. The same mm -hmm. with pixel. If you have the information at the pixel level, okay. how do you divide the pixel? Which is not necessarily uh -huh. no no you can't divide the pixel and so both of RL data have a dimension of two you know they are in they are in space where point data 
you don't have dimension of points. Points are just one. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah. Oh. And to add completely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just a, a different, a different. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a different. Um, so basically, you you have this main difference between aerial geostatistical and uh, uh, point pattern. Then each one of these is divided by in within uh, raster and vectors. Raster and vectors are where to store data. Uh huh. Uh, okay. Where to store data? data. She use are more uh, support of the data. This is more like conceptual way of understanding uh, how we relate the world to the um, wide raster and vector are mostly like, uh, let's say, physical abstraction. OK. Uh, one point that to complicate a bit, some data, some special data do not have domain. This is rare, ah, okay. but it exists. Like the common example is fish, fish in the sea. When you try to estimate the number of fish, you do not uh -huh. know uh, the domain. Is it the whole sea? Is it some part of the uh -huh. sea? And it's also present, well, it's very frequent in ecological data. Mm -hmm. Let's say like you do not know, let's say a tree or plants, that maybe uh, you need to determine the area where they live, but you do not know that. So you have to okay. assume, like some other factors to, to have like a domain. Uh -huh. But this is rare. I mean, this is rare. Let's come on. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, then, then we talk about the coordinate reference systems. Uh, so the, the spatial data representation is um, can be um, represented with projected coordinate reference system. What this coordinate reference system do is uh, setting the origin and the unit of measurement of the coordinates and then allows transformation of all data to common CRS. So uh, common re com um, coordinate reference system. What, what, what this means? Basically, we can understand this uh, with some uh, like examples. We, um, we may, um, so we have two different types. Okay, we have unprojected geographic reference systems, which use um, longitude and latitude. And an example of this uh, is, um, uh, so using longitude and latitude. And as you can see, for example, you can do this map uh, simply um, with ggplot2, um, loading uh, the world data, with the function map data, and then plotting with the geom polygon. So, um, here we have uh, um, uh, the uh, world, which is um, uh, this type of data. So we have longitude and latitude and the group, which is the, the polygon. Uh, and then you can use ggplot with this data and uh, latitude and la longitude, and then setting the group equal to group because you need to group all the, 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 the different polygons together. And then uh, you can use chord map with a projection. And this time you use this uh, uh, orthographic projection with a certain orientation, you can change the orientation as you like, in a way that you can obtain this like um, uh, no flat earth uh, visualization with this uh, projection ortho. Okay. And um, so these are defined as unprojected and we talk about that a bit more later. And then the other type are the projected. This time, uh, basically, they use East and North Cartesian coordinates. This is not quite right because I did just as the same as before, but just didn't use the um, uh, uh, chord map. But now I used 
Decor, the simple feature. As you can see, if I had used the Gord map here, there would be some, some distortion. Okay, even if I group it by group. So I need to do a simple fission in this case to, uh, to do this. And uh, this is, um, you know, some, some uh, complexity of the spatial data. But an explanation, an explanation of why this uh, is happening uh, belongs to the uh, geographic coordinate systems. So basically we have a large latitude and longitude. What are they? Okay, these are, belongs to, as I said, the unprojected uh, coordinate reference systems, okay? So they are angles expressed in decimal degree or in degree minutes and seconds. So these one are angles. And so are uh, like unprojected. While the projected coordinate reference system are the universal transverse marcator type of chords. Uh, basically, um, uh, these are the, um, uh, the coordinates that are expressed in meters. So basically the earth in this case is divided by 60 zones of six degree of longitude in width. And each of these zones use a transverse marketer projection that maps a region of large north, south end. So to be more specific, okay, um, you, you, have, uh, you don't have longitude and latitude. You have meters, meters a distance. Uh, and we have seen this uh, in this data set. Okay, in this data set, you have the, the distance with, you, as you can see, there are no coordinates, you know, but you, here is 501. This is not possible because you, you have uh, 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 at maximum uh, uh, a certain number of degree, you, you cannot reach 500. Huh? Um, so these are meters, distance in meters from the equator, distance in meters from the north, uh, Paul. Okay, but there's something in the chat. Uh, I hate coordinate system. Okay. <laughs> um, just, a website, just a quick website about it that I found easy to understand. But yeah, you explained it well. Like uh, geographic system, it just angles from the angles in the middle of the ellipsoid, and projected system, like you just flatten everything. Uh huh. That's it, um, but yeah. So if, yeah. if you want a lot of time when I need a quick refresh, I go to this website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have a look, I have a look. So um, uh, basically what's happened is that uh, uh, when we map our data, we might want to center our view uh, at some specific points more than others. But uh, the, in general, the coordinate reference systems provide a starting point. So which can be like the, the earth um, center of mass. Okay, and this is the starting point. And this is the, one of the common uh, values that are used um, when you establish, uh, because you, you provide some meters, for example, no? so distance from, from certain point, but, but you, you might want to set this, the, the point to start, and then you add this distance from the, the starting point in meters. So you have then your coordinates set on a specific point uh, to start. So you, you basically, uh, can can change the projection as long as you like, okay? 
And um, this is um, an, an explanation of this is that the earth shape is uh, like an elliptic. No, it's an oblate el ellipsoid model. No, okay, which are the the uh, on a side is quite like larger and and and, and shorter at, at, at the the two uh, at the the top and the bottom sides, no? Okay, so um, to establish, so it's not just rounded, uh, you can say, you know, that zero is the center and all the other um, degree around are most like likely to find, okay? So now we have an ellipsoid and uh, there is a, a world geodetic system, uh, which uh, basically provide a global positioning, okay, for, for some uh, points. But you can change it. Well, you can change it with the projection attributes. So you can assign different attributes to your, to your data. So you can like shift your point of view in the, of the map to different, uh, um the different direction what's happened here is that for example if we use this uh, this function this from the rg dot package so make epsg and uh, as i said this uh, um, epsg is the geodetic parameter data set so it's a public registry of geodetic datum, the dati, uh, okay, and uh, spatial reference system uh, get, that was originally created from the European Petroleum Survey Group. So you you see that uh, if I use this function, what it open up, it's a, a table, okay, where you find the codes some notes and your projection for. This projection is a, like a formulation that you grab and put in your, um, um, and you assign to your coordinate reference system, just as this, okay? And so then you can transform your data based on this projection and then plot it, okay? Here we, we have, uh, uh, here there's some explanation of what this long, uh, what is it? This long uh, um, formulation. Um, so we have some elements inside this formulation and um, few of them are this like init and you specify the EPSG, generally is 43 to six. Then you have the projection, and then you specify if you are using long lat of, or if you are using UTM, so non-projected or projected um, reference system. And then you can specify the zone. If you use UTM, you specify the zone. Then again, ellipsoid, the most common is this and so on and so forth. So you specify the, the units, if they're meters. Um, basically, the, the, an example here uses uh, um, this, um, this data frame, no? D, which is this. So you have longitude and latitude. What's happened here? Uh, is that you assign a coordinate reference system based on um, WGS 84. So this is the basically long uh, formulation. You have the branch, the ellipsoid and the datum. So the datum was these things here. The datum uh, defined the position of the ellipsoid relative to the center of the earth. It provides the or, an origin point. Okay, so usually you use this because it's the center of mass, but you can, you, you have others. 
that you can use. Um, for example, if, if we go to 43, where is it? To 43. Uh, 26, which is the, you know, the common one, you, you see that there's others possible to use if you have other, like, different points of view. And then, uh, so you can use SP transform on your data to add this transformation. Okay. And then you transform, you, you have the new, okay? As you can see, you now have UTM. Okay, because you did some transformation. Uh, that, just uh, maybe, uh, so I think it's yeah. great because like uh, you, you explain everything very clearly. Um, just a quick note, currently um, PROSH4 is not that, I mean, this is where like uh, history came and from also, because currently uh, Pro, we are in PROSH7 or PROSH8, the version, and they did not use a PROSH string. This is like a string. Yeah. Uh, in PROSH4, it was implemented for years. I think when I, uh, it have, the PROSH version did not move for 20 years. And then uh, we went like to PROSH 4, PROSH 5, PROSH 6, PROSH 8. I don't know which version we are now. But uh, currently, uh, it uses another library. I mean, the PROSH are updated. But a lot of statistical package still are using PROSH 4. And they are using uh -huh. SP. So it's, very, it's good to understand uh, the, the PROSH 4 version with the string and everything like you explained. So that's mean like if you understand that, you basically understand coordinate reference system, like because you understand the ellipsoid, you understand the datum, you understand the units, everything. But uh, currently um, what is used uh, is Proj 8 and uh, oh. it's not any more, maybe nine, I don't know. And, uh, but since Proj 6, I think uh, it's not any more string, but it will be like some kind of list uh with sub list if uh. you go uh and you will and you di directly use uh transform with sf so sf okay. will use the new version of prog that will okay. store the coordinate system the the new way but it still have compatibility but i don't know how long it will be maintained so but but you, I you do show you an example st if you want. You, uh, CRS. Yes. yes. If you ask, for example, SF CRS, like for your DNU, yeah, like that, for example, and just plot it. How do I plot it? Yeah, just, just send it. Just like uh, run it. It will work. Oh, okay. See, this is this is not anymore just a string. This is a list with sublist. So it specify like the coordinate reference system as user inputs. Then it write it write it as a well known text WKT, which is another list, which contain a various sub list like the geos, the datum, the spheroid, mm -hmm. the authorities that uh, set it up. Like some sometimes it yeah it's a, a PSG which is a um, a petroleum consortium. Um, because like this is was the institution that wanted like to know where oil was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and up, I think it's, um, in fact, in uh, fact, but they they have their website, yeah, yeah, they have their website, but it can be S3, for example, the authority S3, also like you know, like the the, the provider of RGIS, the companies that provide RGIS, also they can also be listed. Or you can also like have like for example the French coordinate system. This is the French Institute, the authority. Yeah, uh -huh. in the authority. So you have like a lot of uh, information like and and you have more complex one of you have more complex uh, CRS now. This is just like so in the book uh, because a lot of special statistical special package still use SP 
and uh, ergidol air and stuff like that. Uh, but so this uh, is the, this is projection six. Eh? This is proj six. Eh? Yeah, this is proj six. I think yes. Ah, oh, okay. I mean, starting with proj six. Uh, when you're downloading proj six, you are downloading a small database uh, mm -hmm. with SQLite that store every this information. And then you are like uh, brush, uh, brush six. I mean, starting with brush six, they use that to reproject. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes okay. you cannot do just that, no? You need yeah, to specify sometimes more because, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of packages still use SP or the all the way of RGDOL. But RGDOL is maintained by Roger Bivans and it's going to retire. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that, that was for the story. Okay. Just okay. So we we have seen this just uh, like uh, to understand a bit more about that. That then uh, that there, there would be more transformation. Okay. So what's happened here? This this is the what we were talking about before. Uh, the shapes files. Okay. The shape files consist of a collection of related files. They have different extensions and a common name and are stored in the same directory. So a shape file has three mandatory files, such as SHP, SHX, and DBF. But uh, why is not uh, showing up? Stovinato? Uh, I don't know why. Why didn't didn't show up? Okay, so the uh, the SHP files, the shape files in itself contains the geometry. Okay, this uh, instead the HX, uh, the positional index of the geometry. So seek allows you to seek forwards and backwards the shape file. So it's it's a layer, okay? It's a layer. And then you have the DBF where you can find the attributes for each shape and then other files uh, like the projection, the SPN and the shape file XLM. So you, you might find a directory or a container with all these files and how you can do for reading them is using this read OGR, OGR function from R, uh, GDAL. For example, um, we have this uh, set, this uh, directory. Then uh, uh, we read the um the shapes files to retrieve the all the data for the map okay now as you can see it's a list of object of class polygons there is the uh, area uh some other informations and everything and then there is the the the, the data set okay in itself, which contains some other information. It's a, you can see the class, it's a spatial polygon data frame. And uh, then if you do like map at this point, okay, and then you do the hat, you see that you can retrieve other data. So you can see the box as before. So the minimum and maximum longitude and latitude. You can do map and uh, so the data, you can see the polygons, you can see the projection strings. Okay, so those things. Too. And, ah, okay. So this is what uh, uh, you can do when you have a container with, with, with all the layers of a shape files. You can, you can use read or gf. And then you can plot the map. You just 
For example, you can use the plot function or uh, you can use the ST read as well. And again, you have the simple feature as before, and then you can plot it. But now, as you can see, you don't have just one map. So you have different layers, different things, uh, different maps, so the same map with, with different layers, which are attributes. So finally, we make a map and we, we use uh, ggplot2. We can make a map with John so Fisher. A few minutes, uh, Federica. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. This read Oger, this was the old, old uh, S3 format class that we used before. No, you uh -huh. can basically just use ST read and it will work also. But it will uh -huh, use yes. a, a, a simple feature geometry instead of the object we have just so. But it's important to understand like the way you demonstrate it because like it will be used in other packages. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if currently people like said, like you should use SF with simple features classes, uh, before we use it like this kind of object, but it's still in some package still in use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because I, I, it's happened to me that I've tried to download a, a simple feature file for, so a shape file for, for, for some data. And uh, what I've downloaded is, was a zip file with a, so a direct a container with, with some other files, not only the shape file. So I did, now, now what do I do? I can take just the shape file and ST read the, 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 uh, the file, but otherwise you can just uh, read OGR on yes. the folder. Boss will read all the file. Yeah. Boss will, even Boss will know that around the shape file should be like, sidecar file that will be loaded. Mm -hmm. even, if, even, even if you ask them like to, to just read the dot shape, they will pull the information from the DBF file and SHX file. Yeah. So this is the map that we did it before with ggplot2. So you can do this, but there's other way. You can use like geom map for example, from ggplot2, but then you need to specify the map ID, which is, you know, if you are plotting states, counties and everything. So it's a, it's a slightly different syntax. Instead of using geom uh, simple fish, you can use geom map. So is, or or um, you can color it with, um, and then uh, what else you can do? Uh, I, okay, this was, if you use PNG and then dev off, in, in the middle of the two, you put your plot, then it will save a PNG of your plot. Then, okay, so now that, that's interesting because there are two packages which are very nice, both of them, the leaflet and the team map. Okay, uh, even map view, okay, but, uh, I like this too because you can use it as, as the same as ggplot. So they have layers, they have the tidy diverse syntax. So you can pipe it and, and, and use them. Uh, yeah, as you can see, you can do le leaflet map and then you pipe and add tiles, add polygons, add legend. Okay, and there is a nice vignette for leaflet, um, easily found on the internet. Here, what we do is setting up the coordinate reference system on the data. So in a way that, as you can see, we have uh, this uh, uh, EPSG set on 4267, which is not good because we, we need to switch. Why, why we should need to switch? Why we, why we need to switch it to, to, an, to the other one, to 43.26? Why is that? Because we need it to be in the one coordinate. Ah, OK. Because I mean, uh, um, make, as a, I think leaflet uh, by, uh, have two main, the 
4326 and maybe the Google one, 3857. But it's better to be 4326, which is the world uh, WGS 84, I think. The general, the general. Coordinate. So it's like in latitude, long, long longitude, and it know uh, how to plot it worldwide because the plot work well worldwide. Okay, uh, as you see, it, it throws a warning using leaflet uh, with this uh, EBG uh, SG, it throws a warning and say, uh, the simple fissure layer has inconsistent uh, that UM, so uh, you need to change that basically, and you need this, this uh, value here. Uh, this is the map that you uh, uh, can make with leaflet, which is very nice. And then mm, you can change it. Uh, we use, here we use map view, which is another uh, same package uh, for making quick maps. Uh, and then uh, even interactive, so you can see the things and everything. And uh, you can even change the background with some options. And what else? Uh, now, here there's an error in the book because it said the synchron, uh, it's made from map view. Instead it's from uh, lip sync because it didn't work. So. I, um but um basically you cannot just use patchwork or grid arrange or something something like that to arrange these two plots these two map you need to use a specific function for to be to be able to put these two maps one aside of the other then here is a t map and um, the, the same as li, li, leaflet, uh, but here we use the plus, just um, as in ggplot2. So you can see that you add, you have the shape, you add the polygons, and even for, for uh, team map, there is a nice vignette with all examples that makes you understand uh, what, clearly what to do. Okay, so it's all. Um, uh, it's all for Good me. Job, Rika. <laughs> awesome job. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. I'm nice. going to see this I8 coordinate system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a funny website like uh, that help you like when you are in the trouble. Okay. I, I use it like uh, a lot of time. It's very quick also, like it's, you know, it's very practice focus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. uh, I, I think like map view, just a wrapper around leaflet for quick and dirty work. You know, like when you are like working quickly because leaflet mm -hmm. can take a lot of time to, to do a good, a good representation. And sometimes you just want, you know, have like quick representation. And this is where map view like is, is perfect. But yeah, and I think Tmap also is leaflet when you do, uh, because Tmap have two modes. Tmap work, work on mode. It have a mode with uh, static, where you are doing like kind of JJ plots, and the mode uh, dynamic, where you are using like G leaflet. So it's, it's allowing you to switch this mode. I think you call it view or mode, I don't remember. I'm not a, a Tmap expert, but yeah, that's it. How was it for you, uh, Olua Femi? Yes, it was fine. Ah, good. N no but question? I just have, yes, I have one question to clarify. Sure. Though I know, uh, looking at uh, uh, the world today, geographical data, they normally use, uh, majority use WGS 84. So I would like to know that what are the best practices? Because I look at some, in some visualization, when I look at the map, some of them use different uh, uh, projection. So what is like the best practice? Is it just WGS 84 or which other projection? 
This is a very difficult question. <laughs> it's, uh, if you are working at the world level, every projection will have default. So you will have to pick what default you, what default you want to use. Like if you want to be like, uh, because like every projection will try to be correct either in area or either like represent correctly the parallel of the data, you know, like does the parallel of, does the parallel is well represented or not? So it will depend of what you want to represent. Okay. And, but if you are working at the world level and just do representation, I think Molweid, I can put you a link on it, is the best one. And, uh, but it's just because it keep the area similar, but you have other one, but it's, it, but if you are working at the scale of a country, I will recommend you that you use the, what the country, um, cartographic and uh, institutes recommend. Italy, for example, have his own institute, and I don't remember which one they recommend, but they recommend one. France have also one. Uh, I don't know, you are from Nigeria, no? Yes, yes, yes. We if, use if W84. Not... We use yes, WTS84. So, so you, but this is like a non-projected one. If yes. you want to use a projected one, like Federica said, you should use U U UTM. Okay. Uh, I will put a link uh, on on it on the. Okay. okay, it start to be difficult with two kids, but uh, yes, I put the link on the chat, and they give you good advice. Also, you will find here a link on how to set up your own custom CRS. It's possible. It's a very okay. good book, by the way, the Joe Comp with R. And uh, they go, they explain everything a bit more shortly. Okay. Thank I hope you. it helps your question. Yes, yes, yes. I have but the book already. I have the it, book. It, it's difficult. It's a difficult question. No one has a good answer. So <laughs> it depends on what you are trying to do. And you have to pick the good uh, CRS for the task you need. Okay. So. But usually, like if you are working worldwide, and you know it's just just a quick map, double G, double uh, the world ge w g a s eighty four will be the good one. Okay, if it's correct, I will let you. Go. <laughs> Thanks for thank you for okay, today. Thank you very much, Federica. Okay. Awesome. It was a difficult thank you. chapter. A lot of stuff. And perfect. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.